Greece is a poor country, but it's known the world over because European civilization was born here almost 3,000 years ago. Constantine has seen more of Greece than most of us. He's the captain of a small cargo-carrying sailboat. There are thousands of other boats like his. They are called kaiks and travel back and forth between the islands and the mainland. Our ancestors sailed these same waters in the same kind of boats thousands of years ago. The kaiks have always been important to the commerce of our country. In Greece, many of the cities and towns are on the sea coast. Houses, markets and shops are clustered around the harbors. <laughs> Directly behind rise high mountains, which are hard to cultivate and difficult to cross. These mountains separate our villages from one another. Only goats can live on the sparse grass. From them we get milk and cheese, meat, wool and leather. Where the soil is somewhat better, we grow olives. Here also we raise grapes for wine and raisins. Around Corinth in central Greece are vineyards where we grow a special kind of grape which is small and seedless. We produce thousands of tons of them each year and they are one of our largest exports. The pickers lay the fresh grapes out in the sun where they shrivel and dry. Dried grapes are raisins. These raisins are called currants after the city of Corinth. The hot, dry climate of our country is good for citrus fruit. Our lemons are said to be among the finest in the world. We get a rich harvest of this fruit, which we sell to foreign countries. Down in the valleys, where the earth is less stony, we raise wheat. But even in the more fertile farmlands, we can grow wheat only in the winter time, when it rains. Our summers are too hot and too dry. And as large as the winter wheat crop is, it's never enough to make bread for all of our people. And we must import a great deal more. Our land is largely barren with few minerals and other natural resources. Half of it is mountainous. Most of the seven million Greeks live along the sea coasts or level lands in the interior. Many live on the surrounding islands. One of these islands is Kefalonia in the Ionian Sea. Kefalonia is a regular stop on Constantine's route. Constantine and his mate were born in Kefalonia and like many Greeks went to sea when they were boys. Their families still live in a small mountain village on the island. At the harbor on Kefalonia, there is a great deal of activity when the kayaks dock. Some of the boats bring in fertilizer. It's one of the things we must have for our farms. At another dock, flour is unloaded. 
the flour and the fertilizer have come from other countries. They will be taken inland to the mountain farms and villages. The journey to the interior over the bad roads is difficult. The home of Constantine's family is a little village high up in the mountains. There have been few changes in the village in hundreds of years. What the people wear, like what they eat, depends largely on what they can produce for themselves. They spin yarn for their clothing from the wool of their goats. They don't have machinery in the village because they are too poor to buy it. The cobbler makes shoes for all the people of the village, as his father did before him. He cuts his shoes after an old pattern. When they are finished, he'll exchange them for some meat or flour or oil. But nails, which are made of iron that we must import, are scarce and hard for him to get. The old nails are used over and over again. Most people of the village are farmers. The climate is so hot and dry and water is so scarce that they have to use a special system of farming common to many of the countries bordering the Mediterranean. It is called free story farming, growing things at three different levels, above the ground, close to the ground, and on the ground itself. On the ground, among the olive trees and grapevines, small patches of wheat are planted. The wheat grows only during the rainy months of winter, and usually in small amounts. Close to, but above the ground, are grapevines. Each year they are cut down, and the dry earth around the roots is broken and softened. By the time the grapes are ripe, the vines will be three or four feet above the ground. Higher still above the ground are the olive trees. Like most Greek boys, Constantine's nephew, Stavro, helps his father. Someday, the land will be his, and he must learn how to work the soil. By means of three-story farming, each family usually raises enough food for its own needs. From the olives of their trees, they get olive oil for their cooking. They don't have the comforts of city people or even of those who live in the small harbor towns. They live simply and depend almost entirely on the food they raise themselves. Oil from their own olive trees, meat from their own goats, a few vegetables from the small patch of garden. 